This program is a presentation of UCTV for educational and non-commercial use only. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. David Granite, and welcome to Health Matters. This is one of those shows where you really don't want to change the channel or look away, because we're going to talk about something that every American ought to be proud of. And this is something that I didn't know that much about until I started really getting ready for this. Did you know that our country helps provide services that helps people all over the world? Did you know that we have a floating hospital that we have. It's an incredible thing. And wait until you hear the details on this. To get us through this, we have Captain James Rice. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Captain Rice is commanding officer of the medical treatment facility for the USNS Mercy, which is the floating hospital that I was just talking about. Um, and and I, I really meant what I said. This is one of the proudest things when I read about this, about how amazing it is. So, uh, you know, everybody's sort of listening, going, what's he talking about? What are we talking about when we talk about the Mercy? Well, the United States Navy has two hospital ships, uh, the USNS Mercy, which is stationed here in San Diego, and the USNS Comfort, which is stationed in Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, these ships are designed as floating hospitals uh, to do a variety of missions, whether it's to uh, take care of, uh, of injured uh, soldiers, or to provide humanitarian assistance or disaster relief operations. So the ship can provide you know, backup care to uh, soldiers that are in, in the midst of combat or whatever's going on. And it doesn't matter if they're Army or Marine or Air Force, you, you help everybody. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Um, and then when you're not needed in those circumstances, you have these planned missions that you go out on. That's right. And uh, the, the ship was commissioned uh, in 1987 and actually did a mission in the Philippines and has been on a variety of missions ever since, including uh, uh, Desert Shield and Desert Storm. But most recently, uh, the USNS Mercy was very instrumental in providing uh, aid to the tsunami uh, victims in 2004. Uh, we realized that by providing these kind of services that it made such a big difference for the country and was such well received that we should make humanitarian assistance a core competency of the United States Naval Service. So in 2006, USNS Mercy uh, deployed to the South Pacific and the Philippines. And uh, this past summer for five months, we, uh, we visited five countries, uh, including uh, the Philippines, Vietnam, Timor-Leste, Papua New Guinea, and Federated States of Micronesia uh, just to provide health care and engineering for nations that needed our help. Well, I want to get into all those details, but before we do, could you tell us about the ship itself? Because me calling it a floating hospital, I don't think quite does it justice. It's not like a, a room for two or three beds to sit in a little space somewhere. This really is a gigantic facility. Yeah, the, the hospital ships are about 850 feet long and 108 feet wide and uh, have the equivalent uh, bed capacity potentially of a thousand beds. Uh, we have 12 operating rooms on board. I'm, I'm going to just stop you for a second. 850 feet long, three football fields? Uh, very long. It's a big right. ship. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, to give people a sense of what this, this size and space is. The ship to, to, was originally uh, the SS Worth, an oil tanker, and it was converted uh, by NASCO here in San Diego uh, in 1987 uh, from a tanker to a hospital ship because the Navy needed a ship that size to have the capability to support the various missions it would be expected to perform. Well, a, a thousand beds, uh, the kind of uh, facilities you have, as you and I were talking about before the show, many hospitals across the United States can't get near that kind of capability. Well, but of course, it's one thing to say you have a thousand beds, but the, the key is how you staff it. Uh, we don't really staff this at a thousand bed capacity 
and uh, frequently we'll staff it maybe at a 250 bed capacity. Even still? It's still, it's a big deal. Yeah. For our mission, we, uh, we staffed it at about a 200 bed capacity. When you talk about the ship, people think of the Navy, they think of war. Does this ship have any ordnance or armaments on it? Oh, absolutely not. This is purely a humanitarian uh, vessel. Uh, the only thing that we do have is, is some uh, supplies for self-defense, uh, but this is purely a, a defensive, uh, uh, falls under the Geneva Convention for health care. Uh, we can protect ourselves, but that's all. And it's considered a war crime if someone attacks you. That's correct. So this, there's no doubt about what you are doing. Now, the, on this last mission that you just went on, it's not all staffed by military and by government folks. There are partnerships that take place. Well, th what is really, really neat about this mission is we are in partnership with non-governmental organizations and partner nations. So for this mission, we had uh, non-governmental organizations to include Operation Smile, Project Hope, International Relief Team, uh, and the uh, UCSD uh, Pre-Dental Society uh, right here uh, at the university. We had countries such as Canada, uh, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, India, uh, Portugal, Chile, uh, and how that all works is uh, Pacific Command sends out an invitation and uh, uh, non-governmental organizations and partner nations are invited uh, to participate and uh, we work hand-in-hand, uh, hand, arm in arm to take care of uh, the, uh, the countries uh, of, the, of the Pacific. You have all these countries. I was going to try and remember the list of those countries. I'm glad you did because I could not remember. <laughs> the list was so long that it was almost impossible. To, of partner countries, all these organizations that are involved, everyone agrees this is important. We always hear about the role diplomacy plays and the role the United States plays in the world. I can't think of a better diplomatic arm of the United States than what you're doing. How much of an impact does this make when the United States shows up in these countries that really don't know much about us and, you, and you're able to impact them right there on their shores? Well, to give you an example, the, uh, the tsunami mission uh, to Indonesia changed the attitude of, of that Muslim country from about 70% disfavorable or unfavorable uh, rating for the United States with 30 percent approval rating to just the opposite. So that country approved 70 percent with 30 percent disapproval, which is considerable. That is a very important uh, uh, mission of the United States is to, to basically put our best foot forward and uh, show that, that we're interested in the other countries in the region and that, that we are truly in a partnership with them. When you guys show up, this is a huge vessel. You can't just dock anywhere. How do you actually physically make contact with folks? How do they get back and forth to the ship? How does it, the mechanics work? Well, that's a great question. The, the ship is operated by the civilian mariners of Military Sea Lift Command which works for uh, Fleet Forces Command, and it's very important. Uh, they're the organization that uh, provides all of the, uh, the fuel and supplies for, for all of our uh, Navy ships around the world. The ship's master for our mission was Bob Wiley, and uh, he and his, his uh, 60 civilian mariners uh, ran the, the propulsion plant. They were responsible for all of the navigation. And in addition, we have uh, uh, a couple of uh, utility boats that we've nicknamed Band-Aid 1 and Band-Aid 2. <laughs> and uh, they, they uh, were used to transport uh, uh, all of the patients and the staff between the shore and, and the ship. And in addition, uh, we had uh, HSC-1, uh, the uh, local helicopter squadron, uh, provide uh, two uh, MH-60 helicopters for the deployment. So we had great uh, ship-to-shore uh, access. And I know that well, we talked about this before the show that uh, the, the uh, commander of the ship was blogging uh, and, and communicating back and forth with uh, the world by, by that blog. And people were able to read what was going on. 
What a world we live in. Well, it's, it's great. And if any, anyone uh, wants to, they can uh, uh, Google uh, Bob Wiley and check out his blog. He has a way of writing that really touches the heart of, of, of who we are. And um, anyway, I would encourage people to, to read what he yeah. wrote. I, I tell you, I, I, once again, I felt so proud to be an American and, and, uh, and feel like this is such uh, an opportunity for us to put our best face forward. We should mention that uh, the, the ship is not only available for disasters elsewhere, but if, God forbid, there was a disaster in the United States, you can be deployed locally as well. Well, that's right. And what, what people may know is in New York, uh, following the collapse of the World Trade Center, the USNS Comfort was actually in New York Harbor providing hotel service for the emergency uh, uh, staff and the, um, the fire department. Uh, during uh, Katrina, the USNS Comfort was, was off the coast uh, of New Orleans, providing some assistance. So uh, should anything happen out here on the West Coast, uh, they would dial up USNS Mercy and we'd, we'd be on our way. It's, it's, it's comforting to know that, that you guys are, are available and doing that. So your recent mission, I want to talk to you a little bit about it. I saw some numbers that really astounded me. How, how many people, how many patients were treated? Well, we saw about 90,600 patients uh, between uh, what we did uh, on shore and, and who we brought on board ship to take care of. We did 1,300 surgeries. Uh, we had veterinarians on board that, uh, that took care of about 6,500 animals. Wow. And in addition, uh, we provided dental service. Uh, we had preventative medicine and uh, environmental health. Uh, we did uh, public health uh, surveys and uh, made, made a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, good, good things happen. In addition, we have biomedical repair techs that actually repaired the equivalent of $3 million worth of host nation medical equipment. So how we view this is we, we have several levels to our mission. Uh, the first level is direct patient care, as we talked about. Uh, the second is what we call capacity building, which can either be uh, at more of a short term or a, or a strategic, very long term basis. So. For example, the CBs or a construction battalion, uh, they would completely rebuild a school or a birthing clinic uh, that would give the capacity to educate uh, children uh, or to deliver babies or to provide uh, general uh, health care. It reminds me of that old saying, uh, if you uh, feed a man fish, they eat that meal. But if you teach them to fish, they eat the rest of their life. You were teaching these people to be able to, and helping them help themselves. Well, it, we did, and uh, the, then we, we took it one step forward on this mission to a level called strategic capacity building, looking at 20 to 30 years down the road. So, for example, we were asked by uh, the, the embassy in Timor-Leste if we could come up with some uh, planning for their, their national hospital. What we did was uh, designed a five-year budget and development plan, and then uh, we were able to tell them where their, their, uh, their financial status was going to be weak and how to uh, correct that, and in addition, uh, what to buy first, second, and third as money became available. So those, those are the kind of things that will help. On a preventative medicine side, uh, we partnered with the Public Health Service, and uh, we were able to put together recommendations because Timor Ministry of, of Health wants to be the reference lab for their country for lead and copper uh, level. Sure. And so we provided uh, the, the systems and the processes that they would need to be able uh, to accomplish that to assure safe water uh, for their population. Uh, it's invaluable to be able to do that for a population. You're a general surgeon by background. You're putting together and overseeing the, the medical treatment facility, getting all everything ready. How do you plan for all this? I can't imagine the amount of time and effort it takes. Well, it's an awful lot of work, but it, it requires a team of very talented people. And we're, we're very fortunate uh, with Navy Medicine to have extremely uh, talented people uh, many from, from Naval Medical Center San Diego, uh, but in addition uh, from uh, uh, Bethesda Naval Hospital or Bremerton Naval Hospital, Yakuska, Guam, uh, all over. 
But we also partnered with the reserves this time. And I'll tell you, the reserves are wonderful. They bring an exceptional level of expertise because, as you know, uh, they're working in private practice and uh, they, they come on active duty and they're very experienced. So we set up a um, gastroenterology lab uh, with uh, brand new equipment that, uh, that reserve nurses helped set up because uh, uh, our, our gastroenterologist uh, needed to have uh, this lab running for him. It's not just good, I mean, it's kind of amazing. You did a lot of dental work. Um, and I imagine that uh, if, if dental preventive care hasn't been good, that there are people there suffering. Um, the dentists came from or were partnership with UCSD or how did that work? Well, one of our, our uh, uh, non-governmental organizations is the uh, UCSD Pre-Dental Society, which is uh, coordinated by Dr. Irv Silverstein. Uh, and uh, throughout the mission, we had 65 of the UCSD Pre-Dental students on board. And in addition, we had uh, some, uh, some faculty uh, dentists and uh, some other, uh, some other uh, specialties. So they were very invaluable and uh, contributed a lot to the mission. When, when you show up, the people there have been warned well in advance or are working with you well in advance that you're coming. How welcoming are they? How excited? Is there a list of people who say, come to us next time? Is, how does that work? Well, how... Now that this is uh, the third mission, we we starting to have quite a good reputation in the in the Pacific. But uh, Pacific Command sends out an invitation uh, through the various uh, embassies to the host nations themselves in the Pacific, and uh, we just simply ask, would you like USNS Mercy to uh, to come and work with your healthcare providers and your healthcare system? Uh, provide services and and help take care of uh, your patients. I would think that list is longer than you can actually do. Well, they uh, they there is a pretty long list. Uh, I don't actually see the long list. I just uh, get to know who we're finally going to get to work with. And uh, they they must love having you come because uh, listening to you and knowing what you've done, there's no uh, insult going on. You're not saying to these folks, you guys aren't doing a good enough job. You're saying, how can we help you? Well, and not only that is how can we show the, the good efforts that a host nation government and Ministry of Health and health uh, uh, officials are doing, knowing that they need some help, but doing it in a way that is constructive so that we don't make them feel somehow uh, inadequate. But at the end of the day, by having their uh, physicians come on board, uh, they, they then have, have greater knowledge and are able to, to do more. But I'll tell you one thing that's very interesting is that these nations are very sophisticated. They may not have the same volume uh, that we have. They certainly know medicine. So, for example, when we were in the Philippines, uh, our ophthalmologists were invited to, uh, to go to Manila and participate in one of their conferences that was very high level in uh, Vietnam. We had a, uh, an ophthalmologist actually come on board and operate with us, and he had tremendous skills. So uh, our, our surgeons gained a lot just from watching uh, him take care of his own patients on board. The world is shrinking, and, and I've trained three or four doctors that have now gone back to Manila who have spent time here, and it's, it's one of the most satisfying things you can do. Uh, and, and we're not any smarter. We have technologic advances, we have other uh, advantages, but we're not any smarter than, than the folks that we run into from elsewhere. I'm just wondering, were there any stories you could share with us of some of the patients that you helped that, that are illustrative or can, can get us, give us a sense of the kind of people that ended up getting helped by the things that you did on the Mercy? Well, I have a couple examples. One is a 14-year-old a uh, Filipino boy named Romeo. Romeo was burned badly by a, um, a, 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 an IED uh, in, uh, in South Philippines to the point at age eight that he could not walk because of the scars had caused uh, flexion uh, contractures. So his father had to carry him everywhere. Oh, gosh. So uh, six years later at age 14, uh, he, uh, the dad brought, brought Romeo on board the ship and uh, said, is there anything you can do for my son? And 
the, the, the touching comment was when he said, will he ever ride a bicycle again? As a father of three children, uh, three boys, that's, that's heart-wrenching. So well, what we did, uh, we had a plastic surgeon on board and a pediatric orthopedic surgeon, and they removed all of the, uh, the scar tissue, placed skin grafts, and then we have a physical therapy department that, uh, that did all of the rehab uh, and uh, got him through his uh, crutch walking stage. We actually uh, had one of our civilian mariners make, a, uh, make two braces for him so that as he slept, he could wear these braces and uh, he would not recontract. So at the end of the day, uh, it took three or four different services on board the ship uh, and uh, uh, some of the, the, the sailors went uh, out locally. They bought a bicycle. And uh, at the end of the day, Romeo actually uh, rode his bike on oh, the ship. Yeah, I, just, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have to, to catch my breath there for a second because that's, who can't be touched by that? Yeah. Wow. Um, anybody else who comes to mind? Well, the, one, uh, another case in the Philippines is a uh, three-year-old boy with Hirschsprung's disease. And uh, for your audience, uh, Hirschsprung's is a congenital uh, absence of ganglia in the, uh, the distal colon that causes problems with uh, moving your bowels. We, uh, we saw this child and he was distended and not able to eat and was very far be behind on his uh, growth curve. Sure. Um, a case like this is very complicated and you can't just show up for a two week mission and do a surgery and then leave you have to have a whole system in place that's gonna support this. Well, it turns out in Cotabato, there's a pediatric surgeon that, that came on board and with our pediatric surgeon, did the initial, initial stage of, of this operation, which was to remove the disease segment and uh, form a colostomy. But through uh, the 3P Foundation, uh, which donated the, uh, the healthcare uh, materials for the next nine months, uh, that this child was going to need f to get the nutrition that he needed to, uh, to be healthy enough for the final definitive uh, pull-through operation uh, about nine to ten months from now. So here's a situation where, where a child was uh, able to be treated uh, using the multilateral uh, approach of, of host nation doctors and an NGO, uh, which wouldn't have been possible with, with just uh, uh, a, a simple mission. I don't think it would have been possible with any, any other way than, than what you've done. I, I keep thinking about this. You have uh, the, 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 our, our government getting together with uh, non-governmental organizations and a whole bunch of different countries going to these host nations, everybody working together. It doesn't get any better than this. Well, the, the reason this is important is that the United States of America can do an awful lot, but we can't do everything. But if we as a people of the world work together, we can do anything. And so a Mercy Mission provides access to host nations through the resources and the USNS Mercy so that, that an NGO and a partner nation can form their own relationships uh, with a host nation so that, uh, that they will be able to actually work their own their own uh, projects to help that nation move further. It's what we should be all about. I, do you have any doubt in your mind that every nickel is well spent here? Because, you know, as we mentioned earlier, uh, you and I before the show, that money could be spent here in the United States, but it seems to me that you're getting incredible value for what you're doing that c turns around and helps every U.S. citizen. Well, by having a, a stronger uh, host nations around the Pacific, it is making us stronger back home. Uh, these countries, uh, they need our help, but as importantly, uh, these countries are uh, able to um, contribute to a global economy. And uh, the, other, the other factor is that there are some, some uh, bad places in, in, in some of these parts of the world that by making the countries smaller, uh, they will or, or stronger, they will be much less likely to fall victim to terrorism and uh, pirates and other uh, bad things that, that are happening. I know there are people out there who are going to say, I want to get on board with this, I want to help. They can't donate money to the U.S. government. I guess we call that taxes. But 
How can they donate money? How can they get involved? What can they do to help support this mission that's so valuable? Well, there's, there's ways to do that. Uh, there are many people who, who would like to come out on these missions. And in addition to the Mercy mission, uh, there's the USNS Comfort. Uh, there's other ships like the USS Peleliu or, or this summer, the USS Dubuque is actually going to go do uh, Pacific Partnership 2009. So uh, people can join uh, non-governmental organizations and uh, uh, come out and actually participate in, in any of these. Uh, in addition, there's uh, organizations such as uh, Project Handclasp uh, that, uh, that citizens of America can donate, uh, whether it's uh, school supplies, uh, teddy bears, uh, you know, any number of things. Uh, and uh, we are able, if it's a gift from the people of the United States to the host nations, uh, that's, that's uh, how we make that work. Wow. We have about a minute left, so I want to want to ask you your vision. Uh, if you could see into the future, or you, we could run the world according to Captain Rice, how would you see this going in the future? What would, you, what would you like to see us as a nation doing in terms of these missions or in terms of these kinds of projects? Well, that's a great question. I, uh, what I see happening is being able to work with the host nation to help them formulate their own long-term strategic plan so that ultimately each Ministry of Health would be able to control uh, when and, and how the steps of their development occurs. Now until they're able to do that, then uh, countries like the United States or any of our partners will, will provide much more assistance. But eventually they would be in control of that and at a point that they, they needed uh, the Navy to come in and do a particular project, we would come in. Uh, if they needed uh, the, the, the Portugal to come in and do a project, or UCSD, or University of Washington, uh, then that's kind of how I see it happening. And the more we're involved, uh, the better. And the final point I want to make is that once you, once you start showing that you care, these countries warm up and are very happy that we're there and they want us to come back. And I think that by us continuing to support them and their efforts, uh, we will improve uh, the relationship of the United States in the world uh, and uh, make, make this world a much better place for all of us. Uh, amen. Thank you so much for joining us, but more importantly, thank you for your service and thank you for all that you're doing. Um, you've committed to something that uh, it's clearly your passion, and it's making a difference in the world. Um, and every, every person I've ever met in uniform cares, and uh, you're just a shining example of that. So thank you again for everything that you're doing. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. My pleasure. I, I hope everyone's listening carefully because this is still one of the proudest moments I've had, not only on the show, but as an American. We are making a difference in the world. We are a fabulous country that is doing some special things uh, with, with our opportunities. You know, God has blessed us, and we have the opportunity to make a difference. And it's another one of those times that we talk about where knowledge is power. Make a difference in a small way or a large way. Let your passion lead you the way we've just heard. I'm Dr. David Granite, and this has been Health Matters.